for the market analysis for this week, we are joined by Marceline Getebi, who is from Kingdom Securities. She is part of the research team there, and many thanks for joining us. Thank you, Abi. Well, uh, Marceline, this week uh, it, has, it has been a very uh, turbulent week for the markets. We are seeing the NSE 20 moving down from 3,000 points to about 2,900 mm. points. Mm. What could be happening in the markets? Have the markets grumbled? Well, um, I think it's just the onset of a bear run that we are just getting into because what we have come to observe in the market is that most counters have actually been on the decline and more so the counters which are actually um, heavily traded. We have seen a lot of decline even on the banking sector. Mm -hmm. There's a heavy decline also in, on Safaricom. We are now talking of levels of 27, 26 there about. Mm -hmm. KCB has already touched 40. I think these are some of the stocks which have actually triggered the drop in the NSC, in the All Share Index. All right. Yeah. And uh, also we've seen uh, an exposure on the currency front. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, what should we expect moving forward? Is it related to what's happening in the country around the taxes on fuel mm -hmm. or what you're seeing with the IMF precautionary uh, standby facility which has expired um, Abi, I think there's a lot of anxiety building up in the market especially now that we are already aware that actually the IMF uh, SBA facility is actually expiring today so what we have seen is actually um, some resistance or some, uh, some anxiety building up in the market and that is what could have triggered the drop in the currencies today we are talking of currencies having depreciated even by 4% for around 5% year to date for the USD vis-a-vis uh, -vis the Kenya shilling so yes. right now we are looking at um, the currencies could actually continue going lower because now there's more, there's actually heightened uh, anxiety and we don't know what to expect because now there's a lot of that lies more in the political scene. We are waiting for a signature on the finance bill from the president. We are also waiting now from the direction of the IMF is going to take and how we are going to approach this whole situation of the IMF. So as much as we're in a stable uh, position on the reserves, I still feel there is um, room for us to actually see more decline on the currencies or more depreciation on, this, on, on the currencies. Wow, I'm really scared. What does this mean for investors? For investors, I think this time, especially if you're looking in the stock market for, uh, for now, I think it's the best time to actually get in. The, the only thing that we actually... Um, we actually see during such a time is people take a lot of caution because you don't know how further down the, the stocks are actually going to get and any investor would want to actually come into the market when prices are at their lowest they don't want to come in maybe at a stock which is already trading maybe like Kenya power at around four shillings and 80 cents and then mm. it goes down even to two shillings mm. so i think what people are going to do is to exercise a lot of caution for especially people who are already having some of these stocks and for those who don't have the stocks they could actually be seeing some buying opportunity for the stocks Speaking about buying opportunities, I'm taking a look at uh, the top movers mm -hmm. this week. I'm seeing uh, over and above Safaricom. We have uh, Cooperative Bank moving 2.7 million. We also have uh, the East Africa Limited moving 1.7 million. KCB also 1.7. CIC Insurance 1.2. Maybe we could just talk briefly about uh, what's happening with the CIC as well as uh, Cooperative Bank. Um, well, I think what has happened there is uh, we have seen a lot of uh, foreign interest, actually a lot of uh, interest towards uh, selling off their holdings. We have people who are actually taking profits on cooperative banks. So at this point, point I think most funds or even local investors, institutions are looking to actually... Um, come into the market, but others are actually offloading their positions. So that activity could actually lead to the drop in the prices. But more so, when you talk about even the banks, I think also the recent news that came out yesterday regarding the NYS scandal investigations and all that, I think Cooperative Bank is one of the banks which is affected. But I think uh, at this point I would want to maybe reserve my comments on that because yes. of any conflict of interest. But I think uh, we are yet to see what how banks are going to respond to that issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Among the top losers, I'm seeing Kenya Airs. The stock is down by 14.15%. Uh, another stock that uh, is making an interesting move here is Kenya Power. And uh, Kenya Airways mm. has uh, been uh, really trying to fly out of turbulence mm. to some uh, areas where it can land into profitable territory. Mm. Perhaps uh, what would you make of KQ among the top losers this week? I think for me, I'm looking at KQ as a very good long-term buy. We are looking forward to actually the launch of the U.S. direct flights, and I think that's a big one for KQ. 
today as today as uh, as late as today i think the recent news is that actually they are just waiting for one more approval mm -hmm. so i think that speaks very loudly when it comes now to their top line but also what we are looking at when we are looking at kq we are also they are also in the in the season whereby they're also hiring new pilots, of course that leads to maybe higher costs, but at the same time I think they're also, there's also room for them to manage the costs wisely so that we don't end up in, a, in, in the same situation that they were in. But overall I think the operating margins are really looking good and they have shown some kind of uh, improvement when it comes to the operating margins. So going with that I think there's room for KQ to actually continue showing some uh, positive performance in the near future. All right. Yeah. Of course, they are still in the red, and competition has stiffened in African airlines. Yes. We cannot underscore that. Yes, but nevertheless, they are still doing well. We are still happy that actually they are coming out of the red. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marceline. Always a pleasure speaking to you, and Thank welcome you. back. Thank you. Well, time for us to take a look at Markets 101 for this week. Time now for my favorite segment, and that is question on the street. Let's take a listen in on this week's question. Uh, what is the difference between uh, a stock market and any other kind of market? Um, thank you, Abby, and also for the question from the street. I think um, that question coming from uh, our listener, our, our viewer, it's a good question because I feel uh, the, the the viewer is re really wants to understand exactly what's the difference because we find so many people not aware or not having the knowledge of what a stock market is. So in straight, simple words, in stock market, we actually deal with shares, whereby you're dealing in a portion of a company where you're buying into a company, but now you're buying a portion of that company in, in terms of the value. But now it's very virtual because you have to have someone actually do the transaction for you from the trading floor or from a brokerage. But on the other hand, in a market, you actually have the buyer and the seller who actually interact um, on a very physical uh, uh, environments. So actually here you actually get to know who the buyer is and who the seller is. But in a stock market you may never get to know who bought your shares or who sold your shares. So it's more of a virtual kind of a market compared to a uh, the other kind of markets that we know. I know you're maybe referring to the mamambogas in the street and all the others, so probably that's the major difference that we have in the stock market. Again, in the stock market, there are returns that which you get maybe from buying and selling, and also the, there are returns which come from the companies themselves, like the dividends. Okay. Yeah. Quite uh, exhaustively answered. I think uh, we can't add much on that. Well, it's now time for us to take a look at historical facts for this week. Thank you so much for your valid company. Indeed, we've had a really excellent show today, listening to Dr. Julius Kipnitich just talking about the insurance industry and where it is headed. Well, you can always share with us your feedback on our social media handles. You can tweet me at Agina Abi. You can also follow us on Facebook under the trading bell. And remember, we always value your feedback. Well, from me and the entire team, it is bye-bye for now, and have yourselves a lovely weekend. To you as well, Masli. Thank you so much, Abby. All right. Yeah.